What's up guys, XM360 here, and in today's video I have another laser product review for you guys. I finally got my hands on a Wicked Lasers Beam Expander. So for the longest time these were sold out on the Wicked Lasers website and you had to buy them from third party sellers on eBay and other websites, but they're actually back in stock now and they sell on the Wicked Lasers website for about $150. And what's cool about these is, unlike Wicked Lasers laser products, you can actually ship these to the United States and they're not illegal to have shipped internationally so you will be able to order these if you are in the United States and it is a full metal solid aluminum construction it is compatible with all four spider 3 models for whatever reason there's a little typo on the website and it says it's only compatible with the Krypton Arctic and Lunar but it is compatible with the Inferno as well as I'm gonna show you guys in this video the only thing that you get with this laser is the little box itself which is a nice little thing to keep it in so it doesn't get damaged and actually putting this on your laser is very simple. You just unscrew whatever lens you're using on the top of your laser and you screw this in on its place. And not only does this expand your beam and make it wider kind of like a lightsaber so it's not as thin but it also as the website advertises increases your laser's effective range 10 times. So they use the example on their website at a range of 500 meters. The Krypton's beam diameter is 750 millimeters. And with this expander at that range, its beam is only 95 millimeters. So it increases your laser's range and stops the, um, the beam from getting wider as you go further distances. However, for many people, they are getting this for the first feature that I mentioned, actually widening that beam, because it looks really cool um, when you have a laser beam that's visible to the human eye, whether it be at nighttime or if you're using some type of fog machine. It looks really cool being able to expand that beam much wider and make it like over an inch wide. And it, it looks like a lightsaber, really, like you're holding a lightsaber. And that's what I'm going to show you guys in just a moment but I did want to show you guys that you can disassemble this too and the disassembly is pretty simple um, there's kind of like an area in the middle that you can unscrew and you can take it apart and get inside there if for whatever reason something somehow got inside there however I wouldn't really suggest opening it up like this unless you really have some reason you need to because if you got some dirt or dust particles stuck in there or accidentally scratched the lens you could really mess up how this um, beam expander works so you should probably only disassemble it if you really need to. Now, sometimes you end up accidentally unscrewing this little middle area when you're trying to unscrew the beam expander from the laser. Sometimes it unscrews in the middle point by accident, so you just have to be careful of that. I've done that before, and it's, it's just as simple as making sure you kind of hold the middle while you're unscrewing the beam expander from the laser. So I'm going to move on to actually testing this out right now in a dark room with a fog machine. And I have my Spider 3 Inferno 635 nanometers. And one thing I have to note about this laser in particular is that the beam is just slightly crooked. So when I use the beam expander with this one, you will see that it's not like a perfect circle and that some light kind of escapes in one area because of that slight crookedness. And that's not the beam expander's fault, it's the fact that my laser's slightly crooked and I don't know if it was made that way or something along the way caused it to be that crooked, but it's only slightly crooked so you don't notice it that much. But if you do have a Spider 3 laser that has a significantly crooked beam, I wouldn't suggest getting the beam expander just because it's not going to look good and it's not going to go through the beam expander right and it's going to make it look very weird. But with this one it looks pretty good and you can see that beam very well in the fog. I would definitely suggest getting a fog machine for any laser hobbyist that wants to see this kind of um this kind of visibility result from their laser because it does really make it look spectacular. And I'm going to now move on to the blue 445 nanometer color and this laser is about 1 to 1.2 watts of power and you will notice that it kind of takes on a rectangular shape because the blue beam is kind of like a rectangular shape so when it gets expanded by that beam expander it still holds that rectangular shape and it's kind of like flat on one side and if you turn it it looks more narrow but it still looks really good and it's extremely bright under these conditions and it really does look like a lightsaber and it looks really really cool now this is not the arctic laser the only laser as far as spider threes go that i had at the moment was the inferno so what i did here is i just kind of taped the beam expander onto a different laser because it doesn't um, it doesn't screw on to any other laser really 
I just kind of taped it on and I wouldn't really suggest doing this. I would only suggest cutting this beam expander if you have a Spider 3 laser you want to use it for. But I did want to show you guys some different colors with the beam expander, so that's how I did this. Next up is a 520 nanometer laser, and this color is really nice too. Generally with this, the best colors you're going to get are your greens and your blues because these are normally the most visible to the human eye. And that's not saying that the others don't look good too, but those are the ones that are going to be the brightest. This one also has a rectangular beam, so you will notice it's kind of flat. And the next one I want to show you guys is a purple color, but for whatever reason, the 405 nanometer purple color never shows up as purple on cameras. It shows up as a bluish color, but in reality, this is as purple as it gets to the human eye. And it's like, it's UV, it's the ultraviolet color, and you guys are seeing it as blue here, but it is purple. This one looks pretty good. It definitely doesn't look as good as the blue, but it, it does look nice. And the last one I have to show you guys here is a 532 nanometer laser 303. And you'll notice that this one is kind of on the thinner side. It only fills about half of the beam expanders width. And that's because I'm pretty sure the, the laser 303 has one of the thinnest beams out of all my laser pointers. So even when you put it through an expander and multiply it 10 times, it's still going to be on the, on the thinner side. And I'm not sure if this would be the same case with the 532 Krypton. I haven't gotten a chance to try this out with the Krypton yet. But that's what all the different colors look like as far as my color collection goes. I'm going to kind of use this to move on to the reviewing aspect of this. And I like the construction of this beam expander a lot. It's a really solid, um, high quality metal construction with uh, glass parts as well. And the only downside to this really is the price tag. $150 is pretty steep. Um, I am glad that they got them back in stock and you can ship them to the United States, but in reality, this is a very simple product that could easily be replicated by other companies and probably is already done by other companies. And I've heard of people also making their own beam expanders out of like metal and small magnifying glass. So while this thing does expand it 10 times and it is a very high quality construction, I could probably make something similar for a lot less money. So in reality, to be competitive, I do think they need to come down on their price at least $50, but that's just my opinion on it. You also should only really get this if you have a laser, a Spider 3 laser, obviously, that has a very straight beam. Uh, the Inferno here was only slightly crooked, so I was still able to use this and I did have a Krypton before this that I tried using this beam expander with, but the beam on that Krypton was a little bit more crooked than this one, and the light didn't pass through it correctly and it didn't really work well, so I would definitely suggest only getting this if you have a Spider 3 laser with a good straight beam. Um, so overall I did like this product, but they do need to come down on the cost, and it is great that they're back in stock at the moment. If you guys found this video helpful in any way at all, hit that like button down below. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button for a bunch more awesome laser videos just like this. And as always guys, thank you for watching from XM360.